on this the second Sunday in Easter in the year of our Lord 2021, it's a privilege to welcome you to the April 11th worship for Plaza Presbyterian Church. I'm Tom Tate. It's good to be with you again, and I want to give my thanks to Susan Gendra, Erica Funk, Gary McLaughlin, and Jerry Herbert for their help with this service. Susie and I remain grateful for the kindness you shared with us uh, and showed us while we lived among you and served among you. We have wonderful memories. We continue to enjoy our country living here in Oklahoma, where we are recording this service at our, ho our home between the town of Chicota and, uh, and one of Oklahoma's largest lakes, Lake Eufaula. If you have a joy or a concern to share with the church at the congregation, please get that information to the church office via email at plaza prez, that's P-L-A-Z-A-P-R-E-S, at gmail.com, or by telephone at 704-376-8594. I have adapted a gathering prayer originally written by Ted Loder in his book, Gorillas of Grace, for use today. Let us pray. Eternal God, you are the silence from whom our words come, the questioner from whom our questions arise, the lover of whom all our loves are hints, the guide in whom alone we find our rest, the mystery in whose depths we find healing and ourselves. Enfold us now in your presence. Restore to us your peace. Renew us through your power and ground us in your grace as we worship today. To you, Eternal One, we pray. Amen. Our opening song was written by Ray Rep. In the late 1960s, I met Ray at a Disciples of Christ Youth Ministry Leadership event called Commission, which Susie and I attended together at Phillips University in Oklahoma. Ray's guitar and his music set the stage for our worship that week long ago and fed my love for the guitar and my desire to use his music in worship everywhere I have lived. Allelu is among the first songs I learned. It tells the story of our, Lord's, of our Lord from birth through the resurrection. It challenges us to live in Christ. I hope you will sing or hum hung along with me or just enjoy Allelu.
For the reading of God's word, let's remember these words from the, a brief statement of faith. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. May God open our hearts and our minds to hear today's good news afresh. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. First, it's from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, beginning at verse 32. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. And the second reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, and I'm beginning to read at verse 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, If you believe because you have seen me, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. The two texts that are assigned, are assigned to this day in the season of Easter have given me a fresh perspective on the good news I want to share with you concerning the resurrection of Jesus Christ and how we are to come to live because of it. The Acts of the Apostles tells us that no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. What stunned me while digging into the text this time is how profoundly this is not the way I learned to live as a Christian. But there it is in the Bible. So it must be something to be taken seriously. And as though that were not revolutionary enough, it goes on. With God's grace upon all of us, the next verse describes what Acts understands the Christian church, or maybe the world in which we Christians live to be. It says, There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold, they laid it at the apostles' feet, 
and it was distributed to each as any had need. These are truly stunning words. I'm 69 years old, and I have read through the Acts of the Apostles many times. I've preached on it. In fact, I preached on this passage just three years ago. Guess where? At Plaza. But I had never let it sink in the way it has in, uh, it has in preparation for today. My education had taught me to think that there will always be rich and poor among us. And by the way, that is the way things are. There are rich and there are poor. So when I've read Acts in the past, apparently I have read it with my worldly eyes and worldly knowledge. What Acts actually says, though, is that where we Christians make community, which may or may not be in the church, there will be no needy persons among us because of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not like we kicked them out either. <laughs> because of Christ's resurrection, we are supposed to live so that poor people no longer exist. If nothing else, then, maybe we can begin today both celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior and realizing the great grace upon all of us in church and community and seeking to find new ways for all people to have at least enough. We are Easter people, after all. And this time of resurrection should be the reason everyone is rejoicing, for there should not be a single needy person among us. I'm to, trying to imagine this being true for individual Christian communities, as well as the global community as a whole. It's hard to do so. And I keep thinking about how Acts says, with great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. But I think it must go even farther than that. Because of the resurrection, isn't it true that God's great grace is already upon every single person? And if so, why haven't I, haven't I seen that before? Before now? And why haven't we, as Christian communities, done more for others than we have? As Christians... We cannot imagine any longer that God holds back grace from anybody. God's grace is for everybody, and there is enough for everybody in Christ's resurrection world. There is no reason anymore for us to be a sing for there to be a single needy person among us. Then comes the passage from the Gospel of John, which has brought me a fresh message as well. Of course, here's doubting Thomas, so-called. Don't doubt, Jesus said, though, but believe, and he did. Having been crucified and buried, though, Jesus returned to his disciples on Easter, that was last Sunday, and said something remarkable. Peace be with you. As my Father has sent me, so I send you. And guess what? Thomas wasn't there last Sunday to hear the message. Were we? Well, here's what I'm thinking today. As we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, we discover that Jesus is still greeting us with the, in the same way he did last week. Peace be with you. And some of us, like that first Thomas, are present today to hear it. And part of what we need to experience is that to us, every Sunday, if not every day, Jesus says, peace be with you. And when you and I take that seriously and begin to say to each other on a random Tuesday or Friday, peace be with you, or shalom, using the Hebrew word for peace, shalom be with you, we are finally learning to spread the word of our Savior and Lord to a world that desperately needs it. And if we are going to spread the word, shouldn't we be feeding those who hear it as well? Our world, though, is still in chaos. Random shootings occur too often in grocery stores, parks, and other common places. Non-white people are more often than not those who die. We need to hear Jesus speak afresh this word of peace today. And we need to trust that Jesus, mean, that Jesus means that we and all people are to live that peace today.
even through the last year with the COVID pandemic worrying us greatly, Jesus was still bringing, yes, you guessed it, peace. We Christians have a responsibility to see that everyone around us has what they need. And if on our watch, the gap between the rich and the poor is growing still, not shrinking, then we Christians must find new ways to share the grace and the peace of our risen Savior with others. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to make a difference in the lives of those who need it most. Grace to you and peace from our Lord Jesus Christ.
of the dance, said he. The pastoral prayer is based on a rendering of the Lord's Prayer from the community of the Casa del Sol, or House of the Sun, at Ghost Ranch, a Presbyterian retreat center in Abiquiu, New Mexico. It will be our use of the Lord's Prayer in today's service. Let us pray. Almighty God, ground of all being, you are with us day after day, hour after hour, minute by minute. We thank you. Mother of life, you have given us life itself and with it joy and peace and hope. We thank you. Father of the universe, thanks to you, we are always looking ahead, expanding our horizons. We are grateful to you. Your name is sacred beyond speaking, Lord. And yet we know you because you came to live among us and to show us who we truly are. Yes, we are grateful for your peace. May we know your presence as well, Lord, every minute of every day. May your longings be our longings so that nothing will stand in the way of our serving you and caring for our sisters and brothers in heart and in action. May there be food aplenty for all the human family today, Lord, and let it go beyond humanity so that there is food for the whole earth community. Forgive us the falseness of what we have done so that we may be ready to forgive those who are untrue to us. Do not forsake us in our time of conflict, but help us see the way through whatever we are dealing with by leading us into new beginnings. For the light of life, we give you thanks. For the vitality of life, we remain grateful beyond words. And for the glory of life, we are yours now and forever. Be with all those who are hurting today, Lord, those who are sick at home or in the hospital, those who are grieving the death of a loved one, those who are worried about a child, a sibling, a parent who is not well. May, may all of us and them and everyone around us experience something of your peace today. In the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord, we pray. Amen. Our closing song also comes from Ray Rep. In it we are singling, singing boldly as though the risen Lord himself is singing through us. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. They who believe in me will never die. I am the resurrection and the life. They who believe in me will live a new life. I have come to breathe.
come are the blessings of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be and abide with you and all whom you hold dear this day, wherever just now they are. And may we go from this time of worship knowing that in the goodness of God we were born. In the providence of God we've been kept all our days long. And in the love of God, fully revealed in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our only Savior, we each one are redeemed for purposes unafraid. And let us conclude our time together with the amazing words near the end of a brief statement of faith. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.